Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet another edition of the Mill Georgia Spotlight. I'm your host, Jack Ellis. Thank you so much for joining us. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Caduceus Medicine, J. Franklin Automotives, and, of course, the good people here at WMUB, Channel 38 at Mercer University. And let me hasten to add that the views expressed on this show are not necessarily those of WMUB or Mercer University, but those of the producer and our the host and our guest. In the spotlight this week, we have Ms. Janetta Watson. Ms. Watson is not her first time being with us. She's the executive director. I want to call her the president, but chief executive <laughs> officer of the Macon <laughs> Bibb County Voting uh, uh, Board of Elections here in Macon, and she's doing a great job. And we'd like to welcome her back to the spotlight. Thank you, Thank you very much for being yes, back sir. with us. We we ask you to come back for two reasons. Number one, we we, 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 we know that we are getting ready to move into a new phase of election, mm-hmm. but we're also using some new machines. Yes. We just came off of an election. We're taping here on Wednesday, so it's been on yesterday, <laughs> on Tuesday. How did that election go? How many people turned out? And so forth. It was an election for SLOSH. Yes. East uh, Blush. East Blush, that's yeah. correct. For the Bill County Board Bill of County Education. County Board of Education. And we had a 10% turnout. A 10, say that loud. Oh, Lord. A 10%, 10%, 10% turnout. turnout um, out of uh, 105,000 active voters, 10% turned out. 100, overall. Mm-hmm. 105,000 people on the roll, active voters, Actively, yes. as of yesterday. Yes. And only 10% of those thought enough of spending $146 million to, to vote. Yes. What, and now, now, now uh, of course, your job is to make sure that people have access to the ballot, that yes. they can, that the polling places, but it's not necessarily your job to go out and promote a particular issue or candidate and get them to the polls to vote. But what can you do? What can you do at the Board of Election to increase that, if anything? Well, we are um, in the process of building our website as a great tool, where in the past, most of the time, you know, voters would just call in for information. We're currently um, working on our website so that they can have a tool to go to to see what elections are coming up, how they can get access to a ballot, how they can get access to what's on the ballot so that they can go out and do their due diligence to research candidates in different forums and uh, constitutional amendments and things like that that may appear on the ballot. So it just shows that people weren't interested in this because I'm sure they knew an election yes. was taking place mm-hmm. uh, and, and they knew that the school board wanted the money, but only 10% of the people cared enough about it. So, And what was the percentage of those who did uh, vote? What was the percentage that said yes? 75%. 75%, so 75% of, yes. of 10%. Mm-hmm. Said yes. So that's a very small number to have yes. this type of, but thank God it passed, I guess, and for those who were advocated yes. for it. So. And we had just come off the National Voter Registration Day, the, the, uh, the month prior, on the 24th, which we had a great event at our office that went really well. We had some great sponsors. We had good turnout. I wish it would have been more, but we had just come you know, off the yes. National Voter Registration uh, Month, and we made sure we had sample ballots there available for voters and let them know that the elections were coming up. We have plenty of election schedules. We have the information there. Yeah. And it seems that the uh, public that uh, does frequent our office, they get the information, but um, they just didn't turn yeah, out for this yeah. election. Well, now we, next year, we have the, the, this was a small election, mm-hmm. if you will. All elections are important, don't get me wrong, Absolutely. and we should participate in. But next year, we have the presidential primary. Mm-hmm. That's the next big one you're going to have. The next big one. Now, you did not, we did not use the new machines that, that has been purchased. That's right. Tell us about that new machine. Mm-hmm. Why didn't we use it? And will we be using it in, in March, I guess, presidential preference will be the first time, right? Yes. And what's, how, what's different about it? What can we expect? Okay. The, um, the state of Georgia chose a vendor by the name of Dominion Voting. And they use uh, a system that's called a ballot marking device. And the difference between, it, the, the voters will not experience a huge difference with mar- marking the ballot. They have a slightly new uh, process as, you know, the current equipment the, uh, current equipment that we use when they use the voter access card, it kicks out once they cast their ballot. Well, it, they won't kick out this time, so we will have plenty of poll workers. We need poll workers. <laughs> um, they're ins- instructing the voters on what to do. So once they vote on the ballot marking device, a ballot will print off of a printer. Each ballot marking device will have a printer. A ballot will print off. 
they will have an opportunity to review the ballot to make sure that all the candidates and races they wanted to participate in have been marked. Once that is done, they will place that ballot into a, a tabulator, which will record the votes on the ballot, and then we will retain the paper ballots for auditing purposes in the future. That's hopefully that will allay some fears of people saying whether their vote counted or not. We don't know, but they will have yes. a paper trail. So we street, will have a paper, paper trail, trail yes. to show whether your vote. Yes. Now, of that hundred and let's get back to the the, 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 the number of voters in Bibb County, one hundred and seven thousand. Okay. Was that before the purge? I heard that recently there was another. I knew we know that one took place before twenty eighteen. Mm -hmm. Did we have a purge? Recently, uh, is that 107,000 solid or some can be taken off if they don't vote? Well, currently, that the election that we had yesterday had 105,000 active. We have approximately a oh, little over 115,000 overall voters on the voter rolls. Uh, we just got a press release from the Secretary of State, I believe it was on the 30th, and they are due to start sending voters um, letters and information requesting them to confirm their uh, residency so that they can decide whether or not they should remain on the voter rolls. We're due to have training about that tomorrow, so I'm a day early, so yeah. I don't have all of the information, yeah. but I can tell you that that's the process as of right now. They are, actually, we got that on the 30th, and they're going to be rolling it out. It said in a couple of weeks, so I believe that would be this week that they're going to start sending out letters to the voters, at which time they will be placed on a 30-day clock. So they have 30 days to respond to the letter that the state's sending them to respond to the uh, voter registration offices to say, yes, I live here, no, I don't live here, this is my new address, and things of that nature. And that will keep them on the roll if they respond. If not, I believe um, the Secretary of State will then move forward with their purge process. You know, I had the executive director, chief CEO of the Housing Authority on it. He was, we have a 27% poverty rate. We have a very high rental rate. Half, over half of our population rents in this, in this town, in this county. So people move a lot. The yes. Currency. So how do we, do we allow for that? Because if you've got uh, 10,000 people thereabouts, you said 105, 115, mm -hmm. sure. so about 10,000 people subject to be removed off the roll and they move, they may or may not get the left of forwarding addresses. Anything yeah. allowed for that? In other words, if that person, uh, if they are removed off the list between now and March, if that person shows up at the polling place and says, well, I wanted to vote, and will they be allowed to vote? If they have registered by the deadline. So, so they, there are a lot of movers. But movers they're only there now, but you're saying if they are taken off, they have to go register again. Yes, they would have to register again if the okay. voter has been deleted. Which, or which is called a purge from the list, they do have an option to re-register. Okay. But, 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 but they have to get the notification. They have to yes. know, because we have sure. such transient population, sure. a lot of them will not know. Yeah. And don't know. I didn't vote three times. I didn't know I wasn't. I didn't yeah. know the election is coming. President, I want to vote against yeah. Trump. And they show up and then, oh, sorry, you were purged. Will yes. they know? So, if you, so they won't know they're purged because if they didn't get the, the, the notice, the notice yeah. They think they're straight, but they're... they're that, that would be a question for the Secretary of State because okay. they are the ones that develop all those procedures okay. and uh, policies and requirements for those voters. But um, I can, uh, from what I've experienced here lately, we've got a lot of people registering. We've got a lot of people, even during voter registration month, a lot of people registered throughout the state. A lot of, a pe a lot of people checked yeah. their registration. We were urging that. We were on the media urging for people to check, check your it. registration. Even if you think you, <laughs> you're registered, check it. Make sure you're registered at your current address. If you're married, make sure your name's correct. That way when you go out to the poll, there's no question about your eligibility. So right now is the time to do that. They have from now up until 30 days before the presidential preference primary to guarantee that their eligibility to vote. Now this process, I'm, I'm told, I don't know the statistics, I'm told that this process affects minorities, black people, more so than any other group in terms of being mm -hmm. heard and making the Bibb County. How, how, many, how many of that 110,000, how many uh, are African Americans uh, on well, I can tell you this because we have a majority. We have a majority African American. Yes, 
registered. But the information that we just got, they supply us with the voter uh, names that are due to be purged. They have supplied that, and they have decided this year, this go around, they're going to make that public record. So we've already even started to get requests for those names that are on the list because there are groups out there that are willing to even go the extra mile to reach out to those people mm -hmm. to try to make sure they can get as many of them as they can uh, registered and making sure that they stay on the law. So you will provide, let's say, for an A. Philip Randolph or the NAACP, whoever's involved yep. in nonpartisan, yes. involved in voter registration, sure. you will provide that list yes. and say, here, 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 yep. 500 people scheduled to get off, yes. get on your horse and go. It's open to the public. That's good. Yes. Uh, have, has that always been that way, that the public could have access to that list? It's my experience that everything that we have other than a voter's registration that shows Social Security number and, per, and personal information, date of birth, our records are open to the public. Now, you know, we do one thing here in this mm -hmm. town. Every week we print and every Saturday we read a public notice in the newspaper whose house is going to be foreclosed on yes. and so forth. Yes. Could we not print that same list in the newspaper, get the newspaper to print that list and say, I think voting is more important. I mean, don't get me wrong, you don't want to lose a house. But if you can put it in the newspaper, why can't we put the names in the newspaper and say, you're going to be taken off the road unless you come down and well, register? That would be something you would probably need to check with our Board of Elections for. Okay. So but there's no restriction as far as you I'm know. Not that you. I'm aware of. Okay. Not that I'm aware of. But the of. county and maybe other organizations sure. and the newspapers sure. could agree, that, hey, we need to do this because Absolutely. we talk about promoting democracy, protecting our mm -hmm. vote, and protect. You would think we would do every special when we know that we have such large transient yeah. population. We have a large poverty. Uh, uh, people are moving here and there. They move two or three times a year. And it's just problematic for them to be able to uh, uh, catch up, the mail to catch yeah. up with them sometimes. Yes, and you're, and you're right. If they're, they're putting information in on persons' homes that are going to be foreclosed on and information of that nature. I would just, any group that we're going to reach, or anybody in the public is going to reach out to, I would just urge them to make sure that whatever they're deciding to do, that they make sure that they're following whatever the recommendations and requirements are of the Secretary of, uh, of State is and an attorney. Mm -hmm. So okay. that they're, whatever they're doing to make sure or try to reach out to those voters is not infringing on anybody's privacy by any means. Maybe okay. someone doesn't want their name in the, <laughs> in the paper. But I would just make sure that you, you touch all those bases before they that before they uh, would place those names in the paper, but they are public public records in our office. Now, of course, we have a few months before mm -hmm. the local election. That's we know March is the and then two, March is the presidential mm -hmm. preference, right? Yes, March twenty fourth. March twenty fourth. Yes. Now May twenty twenty first, twenty fourth, whatever. Let me make sure May I'm of, uh, uh, that's what March twenty fourth and May nineteenth. May nineteenth. Yes. That's the big one. When that's I say that's the big one, that's <laughs> the, the senators, yes. the state representative, the mayor, county commissioners, yes. sheriff. All of those yes. will be on that ballot. Yes. Judges and so forth. Lots of them. Partisan and nonpartisan. Yes, sir. Alike. Yes. Now, will we? Have you already gotten the machines in, your machines? Have they been ordered? Yeah, I know you didn't use them, but are they in-house already? No, sir, we have not received them. Okay. No. We are due, every county is due to have their equipment by the end of January. Okay, so that'll give so, you enough time. Yes. That was what my point. Yes. That'll give you enough time yes. to go through the training and yes. make sure people are We're in here. the process of doing that right now. Okay. Yes. Great. Anything else? We're, we're short on time yeah, uh, today, but, I, but I, you have so much information. Yes. Yeah, I'm going to have you back, but I wanted to know about the machines, or the, the things mm -hmm. that's coming, the Persian. And the, uh, what will you say to Persian? Uh, that's a big thing yes. because it's one thing to go out and register 10,000 mm -hmm. people, but then you turn around and 10,000 people leaving because they didn't vote. We didn't make yes. any, didn't make any headway here. What, what, what would be your advice, or what can advice can you do legally yes. for these people who will be in person? I would encourage any voter to contact the Macon-Dale County Board of Elections office or whatever office of whatever county they're going through or residing in to check their voter registration. Also, on the Secretary of State My Voter page, they can go there. They can register there. They can register online. They can change their voter information online. Um, also. They also want to make sure that they know what polling location that they they are assigned to. Um, right now, we're accepting absentee ballots by mail. Right now, we're not able to mail them out until uh, 45 days prior to the election, but we are accepting 
the absentee ballot applications as we speak for, for, for March. anybody for March. For yes. March, and here we are before Thanksgiving. Yes, so we're no ready. Excuse, no, sir. Yes, yeah, so we yeah. want to make sure this is a good time for voters to just make sure and verify their registration. A lot of those voters will probably go through the DDS, too, as they're moving in and out of different counties, and that's automatic registration. So okay. as they go through the Department of Driver Services, they're automatically registered, and we only take them off the rolls if they contact us and say, I don't want to be a registered voter. We don't, that doesn't happen very no. often, but the automatic registration is, is good for, for, for those that are not uh, really educated on the voter registration deadlines and things like that. When they turn out to the poll, oh, I'm registered. They went to DDS and I'm registered. Okay. So check your information. Make sure you're registered. Know where you vote. We're, we're in dire need for poll workers. Okay. With the upcoming new... Get in touch with the Board of Elections. Yes. Okay, on Pine Avenue. Avenue. Yes. Well, thank you. All We've right. been talking with you. Nettle Washington, she shared a lot of information <laughs> with us. Just got through with one election, mm -hmm. gearing up for a big one mm -hmm. next year. You've been forewarned. Mm -hmm. So take due and time to notice. Mm -hmm. We thank you so much for joining Always. us. Okay? Always a pleasure. And we ask you to stay right where we are. We're going to come back. We're going to talk to a community, I would say, activist, but a person who's more than a community activist. He's a leader. He's a teacher. And we're going to wrap this thing up as to what's going on voting, housing, veterans, and everything else. Stay right, stay right where you are. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Middle Georgia Spotlight. I'm joined now by Brother Peace. He goes by Brother Peace. He's a friend, but he's more than a friend. He's a community, he's a conscious. He's a, he's a person, when I say a person of conscious, he's a person that keeps his pulse on what's going on in his community and trying to educate and trying to enlighten as many people as he can, especially people of color, as to where we are uh, sojourn and how do we get out of some of the morass mm -hmm. that we are in. Let me welcome you to our program. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Yeah. You know, when I say raising the level of conscience, I had people on this program that we talked about voting, and primarily we're talking uh, people being kicked off the voting mm -hmm. road. They're primarily African American. We mm -hmm. talked about uh, uh, people on Section 8 and needing houses, living in poverty, primarily African Americans in this community. We talk about the veterans, that, that homeless veterans and so forth, and disproportion of them are. Uh, African American. How do we get in this position and how we get out of it? Is this a lack of uh, knowing who we are, a lack of what? What, 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 what? What's your take on it? Well, I'm concentrating on uh, yoga, meditation, and veganism since I retired from the uh, system here. Congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very yeah. much. Uh, I've been at this for a number of decades now, but I've been able to concentrate on, uh, concentrate on a lot more since I retired the year before last. Now, the first teaching of yoga is that we're not the material body. Mm -hmm. And this is an illusion that most of us in the world are working under. Some kind of material designation. I'm black, I'm white, I'm Vietnamese, I'm European, I'm dog, I'm cat, I'm so many different material designations. But the first teachings and these teachings of yoga are basically, well, they are teachings of, of, of yoga in ancient Kemet, too. Most people call it Egypt. So this particular spirituality is drawn from Nile Valley civilization as well as Indus Valley civilization. As you know, Nile Valley, and you've been on at the beginning of Nile that uh, uh, Jinja Uganda. Yeah. And uh, Indus Valley civilization. Indus Valley, of course, is in India. Now, the, all the teachings of yoga oldest written teachings of yoga that I know about are from the Bhagavad Gita. Although the Bhagavad Gita is drawn from the Upanishads, and there are people out here in that's all East India. That's, that's East India, yes, sir. Um, although there are some teachings of yoga in the Medunetra from uh, ancient uh, Kemet, which most people call Egypt. And you know that Egypt has its origin in, no in East Africa. Yeah. Uh, so the first teachings of the Bhagavad Gita the first teachings uh, revolves around the fact that we are not the material body. We're not the body with the soul, we're the soul with the body. And the soul is oftentimes identified as being pure energy, pure spirit, pure awareness. 
I know there are some teachers who say that um, this self is consciousness. Oh, we go a little, if we go a little bit deeper, we'll see that there's an awareness here. There's a, an, an awareness of consciousness itself. So that we say that ultimately that supreme awareness is the self. So you, so you link things back to spirituality. We are spiritual beings, yes. We call it soul, we call it energy, we yeah. call it awareness. But we are spiritual beings having a human experience. And there are spiritual beings having a dog experience, a zebra's experience, etc. But that supreme consciousness, that supreme awareness that links us all together, that's pure energy, pure spirit. So we all, all of us, all sentient beings across the spectrum, we have infinitely more in common than we have in difference. And we can never move toward perfect union if we have all these differences out there. But if we all move in toward the same center point, that same ultimate awareness, then we can come together and, and for, uh, in greater unity, for greater harmony, greater peace, greater pos prosperity in our communities. So the difference between church goers and a spirit per per being spiritual, because we have more churches in Macon than any place on earth. So if we just said we went by the amount of spiritual houses, if you will, houses of worship, then we would say we're the most spiritual people in the, in the world, given our location. But you were saying there's a disconnect. Well, well, if we look back at, um, in Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, briefcase, the one that he had in Memphis, Tennessee, the last time I looked at it, some years ago, he had two books in there that are very significant to me. He had his well-used Bible. Oh, there were three books in there. The Strength to Love, his well-used Bible, and where do we go from here, chaos or community? In the last few pages in his, uh, where do we go from here, chaos or community, he was talking about the value system is messed up. The essence of this conversation was our values is messed up. So I'm saying that our value system is based on materialism. And the basis of that materialistic value system is that we, we think, we're thinking that we are the material body. So we say that this spiritual revolution entails a belief, a basic change in our basic concept of the self. Now most of us are laboring in the materialistic value system. We're thinking we're the material body. We say come to the spiritual value system. See, the self is spirit. We can also call that awareness. We're looking out through this body. We're not the body with the soul. We're the soul with the body. And so this is... Um, this is our nonviolent spiritual revolution, which can bring us together. We can never be satisfied through the material body. This is why we throw away so much. We can never be satisfied. The kingdom of God is within, but we're going outside. But we are on the eve of uh, holiday season where we have Black Monday and Black Friday. People are fighting to get into the stores to get a TV and then we're going to put all this stuff underneath the Christmas trees at Christmas time. Material things. Uh, stuff that, so you're asking, what, what, do, what would be your, 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 your instruction, if you will, or your advice to people as they get ready to go out well, and do all Let them continue to do this. However, we say take a name of supreme being. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that my name is better than your name. That's divisive. Hmm. Whatever name of supreme being that you have, that you find favorable, call out that name. Yeah. Call out that name unceasingly, as, uh, as unceasingly as possible. Call out the name and see yourself as spirit. Keep on buying the toys. Keep on doing what you're doing because this is a gradual process. Uh, in other words, you, you, you're, not saying, you're not asking people, let's get rid of materialism. We said you can have that along with your spirituality. We're saying, we're saying well, if you take the name of the Most High, which uh, we know the, the Supreme Being, one of the names is God. Yeah. One of the names is Jinyami. One of the names is Allah. One of the names is Brahman. We might even call it Buddha nature, but it is one. It's that Supreme Being that is omnipresent, omniscient, and omnipotent. It's at the very foundation of all awareness. And this awareness is the witness of consciousness. 
And we're all spiritual beings. But the problem is, the reason we're having so much difficulty throughout the earth, and throughout the universe, really, is that we identify with being a material body. Mm-hmm. And we can't ever have any real fulfillment and in peace through the material senses. And the eyes, the nose, the tongue, the belly, the genitals. We can't get any real satisfaction, any, any fulfillment there. So we're saying, well, don't you continue to do your Christmas shopping, continue everything you do. But change the way you look at the self. Consider changing the way you look at the self. Consider this. Consider, I think this should be, uh, we should be able to analyze this in a very systematic manner. And it should make sense. If it doesn't stand out of reason and common sense, then leave it alone. But all we are suggesting, all we are suggesting that you can consider doing, see the self differently. See the self as spirit. Yeah. Looking out through the body and chant or call out a name of supreme being. But continue to do this. And what does this do? Association brings assimilation. The more we take that name of supreme being and call out that name all the time by our association, we become purified. Purified of what? Anger, lust, greed, which, illu- which uh, give rise to illusion, madness, and envy. These are pollutions of the consciousness. These are calcifiers of the pineal gland. Our third eye. Yes, sir. Now, now you are a retired educator by profession, but you are still educated. You educate, uh, you teach at the Homeland Village, uh, I think, over on Napier Avenue. Is that open to the general public? Yes. You come in and get more of what, because yes. obviously we don't have enough time to give yes. justice to what you, but you uh, there on a weekly basis? Well, I'm there occasionally. Occasionally. There are many okay. teachers at Homeland Village. Many spiritual teachers are there also. However, I do have a website. It's Give called it Everlasting Omnipresent Peace.com. And it's about yoga, it's about meditation, and it's about <laughs> veganism, which is what you put in your body. Yes, to try to live, not live to eat, but to eat for a healthy life, a healthy, healthy, holy life. And we'll see that uh, our diet can help us to be better stewards of the earth. I'm going to have to have you back. I want to have an entire 30-minute program just on diet, spirit, the whole body, how this works, and how it can benefit our community. Yes, sir. Given how we can work together. Our community yes, sir. How right we now. can work together across all these divisions of race and creed and color and genital and all this other stuff. How we can reunite as one to move toward a more perfect union. Well, we've been talking with Brother Peace friend of mine, a Vietnam veteran, a uh, mover and shaker in this community. When I say a mover and shaker, he moves your mind, gets you to think about what, who we are and why we're here, our purpose, our conscience, our relationship with God and with one another. And we thank you very much for sharing with us very briefly. But please come back. Yes, sir. Thank you, Neil. Thank you. Peace. Be still. And we thank you all for joining us this week here on the Mills Georgia Spotlight. Until next week, I'm your host, Jack Ellis. Goodbye. Let me ask you to do one thing before we leave. Like us on YouTube. Subscribe to us on YouTube, the Mills Georgia Spotlight. All of our shows are there. This one will be up there very shortly. Send it to your friends all over the world. Let them look at it. But please watch us. Subscribe to the Mills Georgia Spotlight on YouTube. Thank you very much. Until next week, I'm your host, Jack Ellis. Goodbye.